Hi Aries, welcome to your end of February 2020 general tarot update. It's Raina here. I'm, I'm using the Wild Unknown Tarot deck again, which I have done so. Um, in, you know, in the past, but I kind of, um, no, I haven't, haven't done it. I think the last time I did it was for Halloween because it was <laughs> in that time frame. <laughs> See? Need I say more? There's like some of the images which are a little bit ghastly, but I love the art overall. I just think it's so marvelous. And it's, it's so, there's like little pops of color. There's like texture. It's just a feast for the eyes. I think it's like watercolor and pen and ink drawings, you know what I mean? So there's a lot of details. Um, okay. So the heart of the matter is the page of wands. I could have sworn, I think I did pick this for you for the mid-month reading. I was going to say, start spreading the news. I don't know how many times I can use that one, recycle that one. But yeah, so good news coming to you. Let's, let's see here, Aries. Um... I'm trying to think of like, well, I was trying to think astrologically of what could be uh, triggered at this time. Um, definitely, there's the, we're talking about the end of February here. So the sun is going into a friendly, um, or the sun is in a friendly angle like right now. Um, obviously, let's see, I'm recording this on the 16th, 17th. So the sun is about to go into Pisces, which is your 12th house. So um, if there's something positive, there may be like inner planets. I don't have my ephemeris, so I don't know that could be uh, speaking on this. Mercury retrograde is currently underway in your 12th house. Okay, it will go to your um, 11th house, which is supposed to be the luckiest house by traditional astrologers um, and perhaps you will receive some kind of uh, news that has to do with maybe a dream of yours that you thought you, you were putting on the shelf and you find out that something is coming through for you. I have a video up now that I think about it about this about um, some of these transits. This is actually going to be more about early March than anything else. So um, I've, I have a, uh, an astrology video for that. So check that out if you're interested in learning more about that. These readings that I do, even though I label them as late February and stuff, I'm not really attached to the idea of time. I think that these things can occur in other time periods than than we're designating but just it the whole point is it's kind of fun to give a flavor to what the potential energies might be there's also maybe some kind of a new idea or project that you've actually begun to enter um, enact and that could be very uh, exciting for you and being an Aries, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if Page of Wands is connected to Aries or, or Ace of Wands, too. I don't think I got that one, did I? To me, they're very similar. Um, in the past position, we have the Two of Pentacles. So this may be just kind of an ongoing situation where you've been um, working two jobs. If you've, if you've been trying to launch something or preparing to launch it you may have like been doing a day job and paying the bills with that and then the love of your life type of a situation that could be quite hectic to have to kind of um, balance the two but you know what I tell people that are unhappy where they are in their work but they are afraid to quit because they just can't they really want to have an uninterrupted flow of you know earning power 
I tell people to, and I don't tell people what to do, but I just say that if you begin to create your own business, it makes going to a job that you don't like more tolerable because you know that you're building your future, you know you're really going after your dreams, and you're you're kind of um, honoring yourself, I think. And so it makes it more tolerable. Uh, obviously, there are certain circumstances that there is no, it is not safe to tolerate it because it's just affecting you too deeply. I'm talking about more the, you know, the kind of stagnation, boredom type of feelings. The higher message is the Son of Cups, which is the Knight of Cups. Um, you know, this can be like an offer that is given to you. By the way, this could be a love relationship for sure, and maybe even juggling two relationships. Uh, one is very, one might be very practical and one might be passionate. Uh, the Knight of Cups, to me, says that the universe um, will, when something is really for you, the universe will go out of its way to to offer it to you. The, the Knight of Cups is an offer, but it's an offer you can't refuse. But a lot of times, like uh, Law of Attraction, um, what's her name, Esther Hicks, Abraham Hicks, um, talks about going upstream, and I can I can personally attest to this of doing something, pursuing something, pursuing a goal that was in the basic ballpark of what I wanted to do, but not really what I wanted to do specifically. So it made it, everything became more difficult. There was always more obstacles in front of me. And I think that when you are stepping into your true uh, calling, that you will, you know, it will flow much more easily. And that like the Knight of Cups, it's like extending something to us. Okay, we have as a challenge position the Sun card. You couldn't get a be better challenge card, Aries, because the Sun represents all these good things. In the Tarot, the Sun represents um, love, creativity, prosperity, success, healing, joy. You know, do you get the picture here? It's like all positive things. So it's basically uh, letting you know that this is, to me, this is like possible for you. But it's, there's something that is not quite fully flowing. And it may have, there may be specific reasons for that. Um, and I'll get to, I can just see right now what one of them may be. Now I want to go back to one thing with the love angle because the sun is connected to Leo. So the sun rules Leo. The page of wands could be a relationship with a Leo. Uh, you're an Aries, two fire signs. If you are involved with an earth sign individual, uh and you're interested in, in uh, a Leo, specifically, or, you know, Earth versus fire, to be more general. The Earth person is tempting, especially if you're a um, sun in, in Aries, is close to the cusp with um, Pisces or with Taurus, you may be more inclined or you have inner plants like that, but you are going to thrive more. You're going to expand more with a fellow fire sign because they will, um, they might not be as stable as an earth sign, but they will be much more expansive. And this is kind of what an Aries person needs, whether they know it or not. Um, hmm. So, again, um, very interesting. But um, if this is work-related, if this is like, you know, you're starting your own business, but you're not seeing the profits yet, or perhaps you are not haven't launched yet, um, yes, of course, you're going to have to stick it out. 
uh, Aries loves initiating, Aries doesn't love sustaining. And so hopefully some of you have Mars and Taurus because that will, in, you know, increase your ability to sustain effort. Sustaining effort is everything to succeed. You can't give up. And with Aries, it's not giving up like, oh, I'm the victim. It's giving up and, or even like I'm depressed about the situation. It's giving up like this is boring. What's next? <laughs> like, you know, I'm going to start something new. I have an even better idea than that last one. And then they start something new. But, you know, you may just keep beginning things and not completing them. So you have to be able to do that. Um, let's see if we can get some more clues as to what is really going on here. We have as the, what's coming in is the death card, which is about endings, transformation. So the sun and the death card are quite different because the sun is, we can say it's about creation, it's about life. The life force is our physical sun. And um, death is you know, is definitely the ending of something, the decay, the transformation of something. Um, this is a, a time for you when the sun is in your 12th house. At the end of, starting at the end of February in Pisces, Aries. So it's kind of like, to me, it is like the seed that is planted. So... There is a, uh, a new moon on um, the 24th of February, or uh, I'm sorry, 23rd of February, and it's at four degrees of Pisces. The number four is a number of foundation. It's connected to Saturn, and it's connected to the universal year, which is a four universal year. You just add up the digits of the year. So 2020 becomes a four. Now, um, so it's a building type of a year. Okay, in the 12th house, to have a new moon here, they could be, you know, plant seeds of intention because when you have your um, solar return, which happens to be at the, well, I'm talking about the general solar return for Aries as a sign, it happens to be the astrological new year. It's the beginning of the astrological chart. Uh, you know, the universal one. Um, a few days after that, we have a new moon in your sign. So this will be in your first house, and this will be the time when the new cycle begins. Um, I had somebody, this isn't to call out anybody whatsoever, and I think they were in Aries, and they were saying they were tired of planting seeds of intention. And I know that these are kind of cliches, uh, because it feels like something isn't happening after a person has tried to do something, but it's, I always um, mention that phrase, uh, pray and get your feet moving. It's not, a, it's not just a question of dreaming your uh, wildest dreams and maybe even writing them down in a, in a journal. You have to begin to research. How can I make this happen? Like practical magic. Magic, where somebody thinks something's going to drop in their lap, I think that can be very, very problematic. Aries people are generally can-do, self-starter types of people. So the person who presented this to me, I would love to do a personal reading for because sometimes People may be Aries and their son is in the 12th house and they do have a fatalistic sense of life, uh, like a Piscean sense of life, or they have inner plants in Pisces, the moon in, you know, certain signs. This kind of feels a bit helpless, a bit like everything is, the deck is stacked against them. So in order to really turn that around, there has to be a sense of, um, being able to, you know, um, envision for oneself 
a um, that they hold the key to their own uh, good, and this this is easy for the average Aries if they don't have the moon in the twelfth house because they tend to just be very active, and active people are not sitting around ruminating the past. So just by that very the virtue of that, they're going to tend to. They might make some mistakes along the way, but they're still creating momentum uh, rather than stagnation. So if you, you know, hear that yourself, if you hear me say plant season of intention, you roll your eyes, I totally get it. You know, sometimes I cringe at what comes out of my mouth because I feel like I'm just parroting what everybody else says. But I really do believe it. I just think that it doesn't necessarily always uh, match up with transits that sometimes we feel like doing things and it's supposed to be the totally worst time to do it I would never advise anybody if they really feel called to do something and there are all these retrogrades to not do it I would just say go for it unless it was something so such a risk that you know everything hinges upon it and how many things are like that in this world I would, I probably would never do anything that that was that risky to begin with. But um, in any case, getting back to what we're talking about here, um, being able to let go of something that is keeping you back, holding you back, keeping you down, maybe what's keeping you in between success. I think that with the sun. Oh, maybe that's why the sun is in the twelfth house. I or the sun is in the challenge position because it's not fully active activated. Okay, so maybe in a month's time, a lot of the things that are kind of the good stuff that I see here is going to manifest. And sure enough, we have here as the outcome card the Empress, which is a card of abundance, love. Um, and uh, creativity. Now, by the way, um, I want to say too that the sun card, because I did get a fire sign, maybe this is a Leo, and if they are involved with somebody else, perhaps they're not really free. Or if they're like working far away and you don't really get to see them. So it could be something along those lines as well. In any case, I hope that you enjoyed this Aries and if you would like a look at the next year, the next 12 months, uh, a nail chart interpretation as I was illustrating before because of people's attitude towards the information here, it can vary. Some people don't really resonate with it precisely because they're in a different headspace, <laughs> to use a cheesy 1970s expression. So um, the list of my offerings is below. Uh, check me out. I'm at rainandmoonastrology.com. Take care. Bye.